So we pulled the transmission plug out the first time I pulled this out. It had 200 and 230,000 miles on it. It had probably chunks of metal about a half an inch high. So this transmission has definitely seen its day. Um, I think it's got around 260 on it now. Um, but here's a piece that came off of it. It's definitely like literally a piece of gear. I mean, that's just huge piece oh, wow so this uh this kind of like small debris that looks kind of uh metallic -y is not abnormal um, and it leaves a lot of staining and stuff on your hands but you definitely do not want to see little pieces like that Two hundred and sixty thousand miles probably launched 25 or 30 times between the drag strip and uh, a little bit a couple of uh i guess they call it track cross be on like a track but it's like an autocross you start to finish you don't do all the turns um, so yeah and then driven on the street for 120,000 miles or so nice that transmission definitely seen his days oh it's it's definitely it's definitely <laughs> been around it was in New Jersey and then I got it with 150 and then I put another 100 and Oh, so it was a northern car. It was a northern car. It was New that Jersey. That explains the rust in the rear quarter panel yeah. over here. There's definitely quite a bit of rust in the rear. Uh, right here. Did you see rust in the rear. Here? The entire rear uh, quarter panels on the interior were rusted out. Um, everything up in here. Um, this entire this entire surface has been replaced uh, on both sides trying to mitigate it and get it last longer and then one day I decided to give up and buy an STI that didn't have a whole bunch of rust on it so put it out of his misery if you're putting this guy out of his misery guys yeah I kind of feel bad but at the same time it's it's not like it's a super clean chassis that red car over there is going to be a clean chassis which you guys will see let soon. me let me do a cut in here I don't think we explained this to you guys before but this car is actually John's old car yes uh he currently drives a 2000 12 2012 uh blurple sti hatch yeah uh before he bought that car he actually had 2002, 2002. wrx uh he had a lot of jdm bits on it this thing, was, this thing was decked out it had everything you could think of and it had pro drive front end uh, i definitely put way too much time and money and time in in crack knuckles and bleeding everywhere all that happened the things we do for yeah. subarus yeah so I sold it and then I, it got a small accident in the front. So now we're, we're just going to put it out of its misery and we're going to keep my super nice motor that I spent a lot of time on and put it in the red one so we can save another one that's in good shape. All right, we will show you the red one uh, in that's another day, soon. unfortunately. Yeah. It's dark outside. Yeah, the red one's definitely coming soon. Um, once this one's out of here, we're going to finish up this motor. I got to put a new, a new rear main seal on this engine. Um, I got to touch up a few uh, a few things on the oil pan. Um, the dipstick has a few leaks. Put this light on it. The dipstick's got a leak. I had new O-rings on that, but apparently the O-rings didn't work. Um, so we're going to be fixing that leak up, and then uh, I think that's it. Make sure the fuel nice. make sure the fuel lines don't leak like they normally do on EJs. Was this, did this have a killer bee oil pan and everything? Yeah, that's uh, that's what I had on there before. Nice. This car was E85 um, before I put it back to stock. So this had quite a few mods. And this is a, actually a JDN 206. So a lot of people do the 205s, which have uh, the ABCS cams. Um, I went with the 206. Uh, those are actually from Legacies in Japan. Uh, they're twin turbos. You have to block off two of the ports on the... Uh, I guess the driver's side of the US cars. And then that that blocks off the coolant and the oil ports. And then it's basically a 205 from there. You just bolt all your stuff on. All right, so what was the power level you got you were running on this guy? I never had it dynoed with the new engine, but with the 205, with without the 85, I made 250 at the wheels uh, on a mainline dyno. So I don't know how that compares to like a dyno jet or a Mustang dyno. Okay. But, um, I, I want to say this car was probably right at 300 with ethanol. It was. It felt very quick. Uh, I feel nice. like the STI is lacking compared to what this was, but the STI also has ring land failures. So. 
Well, guys, that will be coming in another video. Yeah. We'll be actually building his STI's yeah. um, engine. Whole short block, long block, I mean... Uh, short block heads. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it'll be uh, IAG stage 2.5 short block sitting there in the corner. Uh, yeah. That's gonna be, they're basically their entry level closed deck. Right there. And yeah. then uh, GSC built Valtran. Uh, valves, beehive springs, uh, stage one cams. So it's, I'm thinking of ethanol, I might be right around 500. Uh, gas, 400, 420 would be great. Yes, can't so. wait for that. So that will be coming onto the channel, guys. Just stay tuned. Uh, so we can show you the entire progress of his engine build and getting tuned and putting it together. Yeah. Uh, taking out the engine and everything else. Yep, taking all the performance parts off, switching them all over, cleaning them up. Maybe some powder coating, all of that fun stuff. So yeah, it's gonna be awesome time. <clears throat> all right, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can pull this transmission out. Um, fluid strain, put the plug back in so it don't get dripped on. Pull the drive shaft out, and uh, we'll drop it down. So, drive uh, we drain the fluids, put the plug back in. I don't need those anymore. Um, so the drive shaft that's come out, we got, I don't know what the heck size these are. They're 12s. <laughs> um, we took off this cover, um, which I guess is just a rear diff cover. She goes this way, or the other way. Um, those are 14, there's six of them. And then uh, if you pan up to the front, there's two more 14s here for this carrier bearing, which is uh, holds the center of the two-piece drive shaft. So those are also 14s. And then uh, once we do these, we will drop the rear section down and then uh, pull the drive shaft out the front. It slides right out. So let's get to it. part out the center's down so now we just pull the plug on the front and it'll probably drip on me all right so let's go ahead and pull out this drive shaft here that's like probably the easiest thing I'm gonna do all day just go ahead and pull this out and then that goes down and we're done nothing dripped out so I guess it was must be higher in the front we actually went to the drain plug all right so we got the drive shaft out um, we got to drop this uh, basically transmission cradle, transmission subframe, whatever you want to call it. Um, but before we do that, we got to take these pins out of these two axles. You can see the little uh, pin right there. Um, slide those out, and then this, and then take it down. All right. So we're almost there. Let's get to it.
Alright, ready? Yeah. Yep. Just make sure you're not right under it. Yep. I gotta crawl in here and support the bell housing because it's gonna drop. Let's see if I can hold it and do everything at the same time. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's easy. Okay, ready? Yep. Well, that'll be on another episode, guys. <laughs> Yay, it's on! <out. laughs> wow, that that didn't take that no time at all, actually. It wow. probably took us 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes, I want to say. Yeah, That's including fun. recording, too. Yeah, it is. So, everything takes significantly longer with recording, unfortunately. But, yep. still, transmission is out. Can you out. pull this uh, jack out from under it when I lift on it? Okay, jack, slide that jack out. Oh, wow, it's really on there. There you go. Oh, God, so we got the transmission dropped. So let's go ahead and jack up the car a little bit because I don't have a lift. Jack the car up and then we'll... Uh, should have put this on rollers, huh? Hopefully one day we'll have a lift where it won't be significantly harder to do these type of work. I know, you just drop it down with a transmission jack or a uh, one of those high lift support things. Yep. So it's much easier. Um, so we'll raise the car up a little more. I should have put this on rollers, but we're just gonna slide this right out of here. Transmission's not really any good anyway, so uh, I'm gonna scratch it or hurt it. Yeah, you guys, you guys have seen the, the metal particles that are actually coming out of the transmission. So our buddy wants the transmission to be able to learn how to rebuild the transmission, we we're assuming, because this uh, transmission is no good at all. This is not something I'd ever put back in a car. Yeah, after 200,000 miles. Yeah, this is definitely going to be something that was going to go in the trash, but he's like, hey, I'll, I'll take it. And we're like, okay. Yeah, we were assuming he just wants to learn how to rebuild it. So. Yeah, I think he wants to take it apart. Uh, I, I think he's used to the GC chassis, so there's transmissions are, well, he's got a 4 four eight, uh automatic transmission, so it's a little different. So, yep, definitely uh, had a rear main seal uh, leak here, all this fluid. Um, that was probably my fault by not replacing it when I got the new motor, assuming that the seal wasn't leaking. Generally, the JDM places clean all the motors, so they look really nice, and you assume everything's perfect, but it's not. Yeah. So Again, guys, this transmission has 260,000 miles. Uh, we kind of wish that Subaru built their engines as, as good as their transmissions, but hey, that wouldn't be fun, right? Well, usually the five speeds are known to be the, uh, you know, the black sheep of the family, so to, so to speak. They aren't. Uh, they aren't known for being reliable or holding any kind of power and it's two piece it's a two-piece transmission bolted together and supposedly there's flex in the case and all that stuff so um, six speeds are the way to go it was either put a six speed and a full brembo swap in this car or get an sti that already has the stuff so here we are taking it apart yeah I decided to go with the sti although i do miss my bug eye maybe i'll keep the red one hey now put 12 cars in my drive <laughs> get eight more HOA letters guys if you guys didn't know well obviously you didn't you don't know but John has a uh, addiction I have two I have, I have a big problem yep he has, he has he has too many projects he lost projects my problem is is I have a lot of projects and I do finish them but I, I don't sell them <laughs> yeah he, he gets attached to the projects I get attached because I put so much time into it yep. and it becomes something I want to keep because blood sweat and tears that's yeah that's for sure when you, plot, when you put in blood, sweat, and tears, it actually comes really hard to uh, get away or split with the, with the project. Yeah, exactly. So, but this, was, this was a tough one to part with. Uh, I thought about it for a while and I had to wait for the right car, the right color, the right mileage. Um, Southern car, all of those factors had to play into it. Mine had a few modifications, which looking back, I should have got one with no modifications because might have lasted a little longer yeah. but I think ring lend failure is probably inevitable it seems to be a thing with the newer 
SDI engines, so. Yeah, unfortunately, when we bought the car, what did you, you had about 60,000 miles on it? 59, yeah. 59, 60,000 miles on yeah. it, and Ringland's already gave it away. Yeah, we, we drove yeah, it home, pulled it, in, pulled it in the garage right where this one's sitting, and I had to add a quart of oil, and I messaged the guy, and I guess, I guess he wasn't aware of that, so we'll see. I'm yeah. gonna find out if it's Ringland. I don't think it happened on the way back, but hey, you know what, that's okay. Maybe he didn't know. Yep. He might yeah. not have known it had a ring line problem. Yep, it is what it is. It's going to come back stronger, way stronger. Way stronger. And, and better than ever. A lot more fun and less oil consumption. <laughs> yeah. Road to 500 wheel horsepower, all wheel horsepower. Yeah, that would be the plan. I don't really care too much about the number, but I'm kind of going after a specific feeling that the car gives you, and uh, being stuck in the seat is what I'd like to have. Like that GTR well, that a buddy of mine has. Yeah. Well. 2.5 liter it's gonna be a torque monster for sure oh it's definitely gonna pull yeah we can't just stay tuned for stay tuned for that uh we're going to hopefully start on that next or whenever yeah but it'll be definitely on the channel yeah gtr is going to be on the channel um we got a, a few little things we want to throw on um yeah yeah trying to keep the keep the flow going and spice things up a little bit change it up so don't we won't do the same thing all the time but uh yeah all right guys we were able to remove the transmission uh the front suspension as well as the uh the drive shaft uh our buddy tom will be coming over tomorrow uh we're already we're already tired we're ready to call it a uh, call it a night um but stay tuned yeah. for more videos yeah there's more to come we got more to come as we said earlier we had uh, we have john's sti to work on we have uh red red wrx we're gonna be working on um there's more content will be coming uh, I think his uh, engine build is going to be extremely fun. So stay tuned for that. Um, like this video if you were able to provide a value. Um, and subscribe if you haven't already. All right. See you guys later. See you guys. Peace out. Peace.